Let us see. Now, I will discuss on some problems and defects of epitaxial film. First, I will address the problems. So, one of the problem of the epitaxial film is a is pattern shift and pattern shift is uh, you cannot avoid because of some uh, group is formed during the initial initial process of uh, bipolar process particularly. For example, you know first process in a bipolar is a formation of buried layer and buried layer is a highly doped region and after that when you go for driving, so a oxide will be a layer of oxide will be formed on the surface and because of the concentration dependent of oxide oxidation, so the at, at the buried layer portion the oxide growth will be more. So, silicon consumption there will be more compared to the other region. So, as a result of which before epitaxial growth when you remove the complete oxide then in the buried layer portion also oxides are removed and at those particular position that means where buried layer buried layers are located there silicon will be consumed more so it will be etched. So, as a result of which a depression is formed in a buried layer region. So, that depression uh, will continue subsequent epitaxial growth process and epitaxial growth process is a lateral growth you have seen although thickness increases vertically, but layer by layer laterally it grows first one layer then comes one layer then the third layer like that. So, in this way uh, what will happen the pattern buried layer pattern will be shifted from its original position. So, uh, that is known as the pattern shift. Basically, if at the beginning the wafers are free of any depression, so that pattern shift will not be there. But because of the buried layer, because of the concentration of the buried layer is more compared to the other region, so there the depression on the surface will be formed along the uh, uh, periphery of the buried layer. So, the step which is formed at the buried layer is nearly 500 to 1000 angstrom steps in the silicon surface from the initial oxide mask used in N plus diffusion for buried layer. Okay. So, must maintain that step must maintain in subsequent alignment and that step I mentioned also earlier is helpful to us also because that particular step is helping us for further alignment of the subsequent layers. That means, your base should be inside the buried layer and the emitter should be inside the base. If that particular step continues in the subsequent processes, it will help us to locate the buried layer position in the bulk semiconductor material, is not it. So, but this particular uh, thing in one way it is helping us for alignment, in other way the pattern is shifting. The pattern shift means there you have to have some correction when you are making the mask layer or alignment mark. Because if you align all the subsequent processes only based on the buried layer depression, then the pattern is shifted that means there is a chance of misalignment. So, during alignment of the subsequent steps you have to align one with the buried layer and one with the other marks where buried layers other markings where buried layers are not there. Okay. So, during epitaxial growth since growth is lateral on growth is lateral in on microscopic scale growth rate depends on crystal surface orientation. Crystal surface ori orientation means the type of the crystal you are using 100 or 111. Okay. So, it depends on that and third one it causes shift and distortion of the buried layer pattern. Shifting of the buried layer comes because of the lateral lateral deposition in a microscopic scale 
macroscopic scale you are getting vertical the thickness is increasing uh, layer by layer but if you see micro microscopic scale then it's lateral growth isn't it one layer completes then another layer starts then another layer starts like that because of that pattern shift is current so now let us look uh, the picture how it looks so here you see a pattern shifting is shown here so this is a p substrate and n plus buried layer is there and this n plus buried layer uh, this depression forms this thickness of this depression varies from 500 angstrom to sometimes more than that so this this depression and now when the n epitaxial is grown so there layer by layer is grown so this and next layer the, this will because it is a, 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 a the size of each small say brick like particularly silicon crystal or dopant atom crystal so there size of the dopant atom so there uh, the this edge is moving and the l is the pattern shift the finally this edge reaches here and this edge reaches here so from this to this this is the l and that is known as pattern shift okay and this pattern shift increases with increasing growth rate and decreasing growth temperature so that means this uh, pattern shift increases with growth rate if growth rate is faster then pattern shift is more and it decreases with growth temperature if the temperature if you grow silicon layer at a low temperature then obviously the pattern shift is less that's why in case of uh, a silent reaction temperature is low that is less pattern shift is less compared to the silicon tetracloid reaction where the temperature is 1250 degree centigrade and the silent reaction temperature is 900 degree centigrade near okay so now this is the pattern shift now the another diagram of pattern shift i am showing so here you see this is the uh, the group uh, is shown in a in a larger magnification the center of the mask is here so now you see the when epitaxy has grown this is the group as aged now if you grow the epi layer this is some verification not in buried layer so even in a in a in a particular uh, silicon if you age a group and then if you form the epi layer then you see this is the edge here and it has been shifted here so this is the center so this is the apparent shift you see it's shown in a small scale here so this is the pattern shift after growth of epi you will find the central layer has shifted by this dimension alignment marks are etched into the wafer but non uniform growth rates cause the mark position to shift after growth so when you are designing the mask or alignment mark in a bipolar process where epitaxial growth is inevitable that you have to keep in mind the shifting of the pattern during growth formation so that that correction you can make while making your mask and other geometry so this is one schematic diagram of the pattern ship okay same as earlier diagram only thing here is in actually that was in buried layer and then epitaxy that structure but here in general if you make a group then there if you grow after that if you grow epi layer then how the pattern is shifting that is shown here now the how you can uh, minimize what are the characteristics of this pattern shift the pattern shift is minimized for 111 silicon by miss orienting surface by 2 to 5 degree if you grow the epi layer in 111 silicon and if you miss orient the substrate by 2 to 5 degree 
that in that way you can minimize it. 1 0 0 silicon by orienting on axis, on axis orientation of 1 0 0 minimizes the pattern shape. And here there are several things is shown pattern shift here. So that means C and D is here, A and B it is shifting after AP layer. These are substrate and AP. So you see you can this already shown in earlier diagram. But in this particular case, this is known as a pattern distortion. In some of the cases, we see the distortion like this. If C D is here, so after AP layer the length of the C D has reduced to A B. So that is known as not shifting, but here it is known as distortion. This is also another defect or another problem in AP, AP, AP growth. And the third one is known as wash out. So here, although this group is there, that is missing here, completely washed out. So this is known as shifting there as such CD and AB, the length are not different, same length but it has shifted laterally. In the second case, AB and CD are of not same length, known as a distortion. In the third case, you see here, uh, this is wash out, means this, whatever the CD was there, AB washes, same surface, this is known as wash out. First case design rule is shift equal to layer thickness. So, Worst case design shift equal to lower thickness. Whatever the shifting here, that is equal to layer thickness means how much thickness you are growing the silicon epitaxial layer. Okay. So this is a rough calculation you can do, rough estimation. So these are this is one problem. And another uh, patterns other than the pattern shift, there is a problem sometimes uh, why you why not you can grow the transistor with full AP? There are certain problem. Those problems are mentioned here, addressing here. Problems in bipolar design with AP. So the, the main problem, because here is the buried layer, diffused buried layer, buried collector, this is the APDXA layer, this is the P substrate. This is N plus emitter, this is N plus collector. So EBC emitter base collector and is the buried layer. This is because of low RC collector contact resistance. This is a buried layer, this is a also known as buried collector. Now, here during the epitaxial growth, what happens? The N plus layer, because it is highly doped N region, so that will out diffuse and also it will diffuse laterally, laterally. And because the epitaxial growth is not very low temperature and the, because of lateral auto dipping and out diffusion problems and sometimes the dopant from N plus regions evaporates into the stagnant layer and it diffuses laterally dopes adjacent areas. So that is one of the problem. So you see if you grow AP layer, so at high temperature this from this N plus region, it evaporates some of the dopant atoms and it diffuses laterally and dopes another adjacent, adjacent areas from here. So this is known as lateral auto doping. Lateral auto doping and out diffusion from the buried layer is one of the problem in epitaxial, one of the problems in bipolar design with AP layer. Okay. Now, a discussion epitaxial defects. So, degree of perfection of epitaxial film is dictated by quality of the substrate, cleanliness of the substrate, thermal and crystallographic mismatch between film and substrate, epitaxial growth condition. 
and epidaxial growth condition means susceptor, growth temperature, growth rate, dopant concentration, reaction chemistry, etc. Quality of the substrate, obviously if the quality uh, is not good that means substrate itself contains some of the defect, then that defect will continue in AP layer. So, that is why the in order to have very good quality epidaxial layer, the substrate must be first defect free and another source of defect is cleaning cleanliness of the substrate. So, before deposition of epidaxial film, the substrate should be properly clean, there should not be any dust particles or impurity precipitate on the surface of the substrate and that is why in all epitaxial reaction before starting of epi growth we clean the surface inside the reactor and that is known as in situ cleaning and either by sputtering technique or by HCL cleaning we clean the surface then we start epitaxial growth ok. And another point has to be remembered, so there should not be any thermal or crystallographic mismatch. Thermal mismatch is highly possible in case of your um, epitaxial growth and where the RA fitting is used. And there we have discussed the substrate may take a bow form, nature of bow form because of the mismatch of the thermal temperature from one end to other end. And that may develop some strain inside and that may uh, lead to some defect and I will discuss what type of defects are obtained from this space. And epitaxial growth condition also should be highly perfect that means susceptor geometry, susceptor should not outgas any impurity atoms, growth rate if the growth rate is fast then there is a chance of epitaxial defects, growth rate should be slow and it also depends on reaction chemistry and the dopant gases. If the dopant gases means source gas or carrier gas contain some of the particles, whatever minute particle it is, if it precipitate on the substrate, so that will continue inside the epitaxial film and that may lead to a crystallographic defect. There are two types of defect, one is bulk defect, another is known as surface defect, surface related defect and bulk related defects. And we will now address the individual defects one by one and we will see how, what are the origins of those defects. So, uh, now surface related defects, first let us discuss. One defect is known as a haze, haze, name of the defect is haze. So, that is basically some foggy in some in substrate surface after growth you may see some region is foggy and it comes from the leak inside the detector or any oxygen contamination. High density of fine pits basically looks like foggy nature on the surface. High density of micro pits, fine pits, they are caused by oxygen in the incoming gas stream or if there is any air leak or moisture absorbed on the reactor walls. It comes from moisture, it comes from the oxygen which is, which is coming from the incoming gas or some air leaks. If a low concentration of HCl is present during the heat up and cool down cycles as from a leaky valve a hazy surface will be formed. Apparently surface looks like some hazy thing and that is nothing but a combination of micro pits. Okay, sources are oxygen molecule or H2O 
moisture or some air leak in any of the portion of the chamber. These are the sources. A remedy obviously, we have to get free of oxygen molecules, there should not be any leak. So then those micro pits will not be formed and this uh, defect which is known as the haze are not normally observed. Second one is the pits and voids. Pits and voids, that may be some voids in, inside the crystal and which is also known as pores. Widely separated individual pits originated during etching of the substrate. That means, as I told you that before start of growth, it has to be clean and that cleaning, cleaning is done by sputter etching. So, during the sputter etching or HCL cleaning, there is a chance of formation of micro pits or voids on the surface. Those are very small in dimension and if that pit, if a particular pit is formed because of the sputter etching or whatever may be the cause, that will remain because of enough material was not removed during the etching. Widely separated individual pits originated during etching of the substrate and remained because of enough material was not removed during etching, to remain there. And the third one is the orange peel. So these are all surface related defects is the orange peel. This rough ripple surface can be caused by too high a growth rate, a ripple surface. That means on the surface instead of optically smooth, sometimes some ripple, ripples are formed and those ripples are known as orange peel and that is caused due to high growth rate. Orange peel sometimes occurs during etching of slices and if it were present on a starting slide, slice. That means originally during etching, even not the cleaning etching before that, if on the original substrate, a, a ripple nature of the surface finish is produced. So, that will continue even during the epitaxial growth. So, that is known as orange peel. Haze peats, orange peels are all the surface defects. Another is age crown. This defect is known as age crown. The raised region at the outer periphery of the slice is due to a more rapid growth near the edge than over the rest of the wafer, which is caused by the gas flow over the edge of the slice. That is edge crown. Edge crown means over the periphery of the substrate edges, the thickness is little bit more compared to the central region as if a crown is formed. And why at the edges? the thickness is more. The reason is at the edges, the gas flow means the source gas as well as dopant gas that will be more available at the edges compared to the middle. And since the source material are more, source reactant materials are more at the edges, so their growth rate will be little bit more. Because at the edges, because gas flow, during the gas flow, edges are getting much more gases compared to the central region. So, that is the reason of the edge ground. Next is spikes. Spikes. The most common cause of spikes is particulates left on the surface. The spikes usually grow much more rapidly than the flat surface since they reach through the boundary layer to a higher concentration of feed material. Reactor and slice cleanup procedure reduces spikes density dramatically. It may also 
form due to VLS that is vapor liquid solid growth that is VLS vapor liquid means metal or solid that growth sometimes spikes as form. So, this is another defect. Next one is faceting. Faceting, this defect appears during selective epitaxial growth. Facet occurs either on surface of 111 slice or at the edge. This particular defect I will again discuss during selective epitaxial growth process. And I will this I will mention the the origin of this particular defect faceting, and there you you will see how the facet looks like. Edge crown spikes faceting. These are all surface related defects on epitaxial film. Now, I will address on bulk related defects. Those are surface related defects. Now, bulk related defects are dislocations, misfit dislocations, slip, dislocations, line or edge dislocation continues in the epitaxial layer. That means, if a line is formed in a crystal plane or at the edges, that line or that dislocation continues in the epitaxial layer. That is a line dislocation. Another is misfit dislocations. It is caused by lattice mismatch when substrate is highly doped. Lattice mismatch. That means if you grow N epitaxial film on either P plus or N plus substrate, then the lattice constant may differ little bit and lattice mismatch will be there, and because of the lattice mismatch the misfit appears, misfit of substrate lattice and film lattice. Film you are growing epitaxial film is also epitaxial film, a uh, single crystal film and that single crystal film, the lattice constant of that film will not exactly fit with the lattice constant of the substrate itself although both are both may be the silica and that may arise because of that may appear because of high concentration substrates high highly doped substrate okay and the next bulk related defect is slip slip is displacement of crystal plane past each other as a result of stress. It may be due to temperature gradient normal to the substrate in a RF heated reactor. In RF heated reactor it is a common thing, there is a temperature gradient normal to the substrate. Substrate temperature and susceptor temperature will not be the same, there is a difference. And also there is a difference in front to rear of the uh, difference in temperature from the front to rear of the substrate as a result of which there is a stress which will develop inside the 
substrate and it will cause a differential expansion of the wafer. This radial temperature gradient results in sufficient stress to create dislocation. The inverted heat flow in a radiant heated reactor minimizes the problem. The inverted heat flow in a radiant heated reactor, radiant lamp heated reactor, that there this problem is not there. The slip is a problem in RF heated reactor. Okay. The displacement of the crystal planes because of the temperature difference, temperature gradient normal to the surface. So that is known as slip, as if one plane has slipped from the other. So I will show the picture how it occurs. Okay. Now, here picture of some of the defects which we mentioned just now is shown. The one is a line stroke that is known as edge dislocation in substrate which extends into the epitaxial layer. Second one, this one, stacking fault nucleated by impurity precipitate, stacking fault this one. Third one, impurity precipitate caused by contamination, that is the third one. Fourth is a hillock growth, you see here the tripyramidal defect or hillock, it is known as. Fifth is a bulk stacking fault, this was bulk stacking fault. Okay. So, these are all defects, this is the line dislocation you can say, line or edge dis dislocation one, this one is uh, stacking fault again due to impurity precipitate, third one is con uh, impurity precipitate caused by contamination, this is tripyramidal or hillock growth and fifth one is bulk stacking faults. Okay. These are five defects, how it looks like. You can just have some idea from this figure. Now, I will show you the, the stacking faults how it appears. Here is the stacking fall figure. You see here, stacking fault is nucleated by an impurity precipitate on the substrate surface is okay. So now the blue one is say substrate for example and here you are growing the AP layer. This is first layer, second, third, fourth, fifth like, like that. Now you see here one thing is missing, for example, you can see in this particular region, this uh, color then comes green and then pink and then black, then red. So, this red and then green, then pink and then black and then red. Here it starts green, this one comes here, then comes pink, this one here, then comes red the red is here, then red is here and he can, uh, sorry black, black is here, then black here, then red and then here red, then starts green. Similarly, in this particular layer, you see first, second, third, fourth, fifth, this layer is in order here. In both the places, the orders are maintained. Different color, I mean to say different layers. Different layers are shown by different color here. But in the middle region you see the order is maintained, the green, pink, black, the green, pink, black, then red, then green. This order is maintained, but here what happens, this 
layer is missed here. It may be because of some nucleation. Some particle is there, some nucleation here. Because of that, maybe this particular layer, first layer is missing here. But from the second onward, the order is maintained. Second one is the green, here also green. Then is third one is again comes after green, is okay. Black is coming after this pink, is also okay. This color is coming after black, this is also okay. Then comes green. So anyway, this is missing one fault in the stack. So that is known as a stacking fault. Okay. And another defect is a tripyramidal defect. This is the result of crystal growth by twinning and is initiated by carbon contamination in form of silicon carbide monoprecipitate. It is common in 111 but not in 100. This particular defect which is known as tripyramidal defect. Twinning means two silicon atoms combine together and it forms a bigger size. Okay. So this is a because of twinning effect tripyramidal defect. So now I will switch over to another topic that is a selective epitaxy growth. That is one of the, uh, ad, uh, I should say, uh, rather recent innovations because the selective epitaxy is, has got a lot of promises. Selective epitaxy, what does it mean? It is the growth of epitaxial layers in some regions of the wafer and not to deposit any material in other regions. Selectively are growing epitaxial. Till now we have discussed epitaxial growth, it is growing over the entire surface. Selectively it cannot grow. But nowadays with some uh, uh, technological innovation, people are able to deposit epitaxial film, that too single crystal film over a selected, on a selected region and this selected growth of epitaxial film lead to certain improvement in GLSI. That means with this technique you can think of the total bipolar transistor with AP because in, in, in earlier process if you grow the epitaxial film over the entire surface area, then the whole silicon wafer will give you one transistor only. You grow n layer, then p layer, then again n layer. So n p n transistor, the entire wafer will <laughs> lead to one transistor. But if you can grow selectively, then in between isolation is there. So as if many transistor you can form and it will help you to make an IC fully grown with epitaxial layer. Okay. Now, ACG although is not currently in wise, widespread production use because it is not yet perfected, there are a lot of problems that is why currently not in production although it is extremely attractive in some applications including device isolation, trench isolation filling, formation of elevated source drain structure for MOS transistors. So there it is used widely, device isolation, that means oxide isolation. If you can grow a, over a particular region epitaxial film which is surrounded by oxide, I will show you the diagram how it grows. So then you will see that oxide isolation is not required if epitaxial isolation, if uh, the selective epitaxy uh, quality, uh, film quality is good. Trench isolation filling. Tent isolation I will discuss in isolation class, then we will know what is the filling of tent isolation. Formation of elevated source drain, source drain are elevated, means not in the same plane of the substrate, it is little bit elevation is there, that is possible by selective epitaxial growth. And masking materials normally used in selective epitaxy are silicon dioxide and silicon nitride. 
it helps to form pedestrial and this pedestrial is required in gallium phosphide LEDs. Pedestrial formation is possible in silicon epitaxial growth and one of the application of this pedestrial is gallium phosphide LEDs. There is another application selective epitaxy that is extended lateral overgrowth which is known as ELO. This is possible by selective epitaxy growth and here what is done, so there that means in extended lateral overgrowth scheme, epitaxy is allowed to continue past the height of the window to spread across the surface of the oxide. That means after filling the group, that means window, it spreads over the surface and if the windows are formed very close to each other, there is a chance that lateral growth, epitaxial growth will join together and they will form a bridge kind of thing. So that is extended lateral overgrowth. On the masking layer, what you have done, uh, uh, you have put uh, oxide and the silicon group. On the silicon group, the epitaxial layer is formed. After completing filling the group, then what happening? Laterally it grows. So if it grows laterally, then what will happen? So one group laterally it comes and in another group, the laterally it proceeds. So these two may join together and on the oxide, it may grow further vertically. So what will happen there as a result of which on the oxide, if you can grow a good quality, acceptable quality, quality of the epitaxial film, then you can form some of the device on that film. And those cases, you can reduce the parasitic capacitance drastically because below that film will be the complete oxide, silicon dioxide, just like SOI, silicon on insulator, growth of silicon on insulator, similar to that. So that is one advantage of the extended lateral overgrowth. So that layer you can use provided the quality of the crystal is very good, otherwise not. Okay. Now, I will show you the cross-sectional view of the selective epitaxy. So here, the ideal selective epitaxial growth is something like that. These are the mask, this one, this one, this one. So these, and these are oxide mask and you can use nitride also and group are formed, this is a silicon substrate. So here epitaxy is formed, here selectively epitaxy la epitaxial layer is formed, in this layer is formed, in this layer, in this layer, in this layer. And these are all oxide, this one, this one, this one, these are all oxide. And the ideal case we have seen, the thickness of the epitaxial layer are same over all the group, but in practical cases it is not. In practical cases, there is a thickness variation. And those thickness variation are shown here. These are uh, the actual case. So we have seen here the thickness of the epitaxial film is less here compared to this group and the thickness here is not same as this group. And the thickness of the epitaxial film is different from for different group size. Thickness depends on the size of the group. So if the, this size is more, area is more, here thickness is less, where the groove is small dimension, the thickness is more. That means the thickness is highly non-uniform, this is one problem of the SEG, highly non-uniform, it depends on the, the size and location of the groups. If the groups are very closely located, and groups are of uniform size, then you will get uniform thickness. Otherwise, the thickness on the epitaxial film on different group will be different. That is one thing. And other is facetting. You can see in this structure, in this uh, diagram, facetting. So facetting comes from the different growth rate of the epitaxial film on different substrate orientation. 
in 1 1 in 1 0 0 growth rate something but in 1 1 1 growth rate may be different. So, what happens in the interface when you are growing selective epidaxy the lateral side here so it is a oxide and this is silicon. So, that means oxide and silicon this interface. So, there will produce some defects because this is the interface silicon dioxide you know it is not a single crystal. Uh, here silicon is a single crystal. So, at the interface so there is a uh, there is a defect and because of that defect you can form the growth rate difference, but in side uh, in this side is 1 1 1 orientation. So, as a result of which these facets are formed this is known as the facet. Selectivity of the enhanced selectivity enhanced for halides SiCl4 that means if the the source gas has got more chlorine atom then selectivity improves. Since SiCl4 has got more chlorine than SiCl3 then SiH2Cl2 so selectivity improves in SiCl4 compared to SiH2Cl2. SiH4 shows little selectivity. The epidaxial selectivity improves with more chlorine contamination. Another problem is the formation of the new nodules. The silicon you see nodules are formed this is precipitate that is coming from nucleation that is another problem. Either gas phase nucleation some silicon nuclei will form and that will precipitate on the oxide surface and this precipitation or nucleation means the silicon nodules can be removed if HCl if chlorine content is more if HCl percentage is more in the in the gas then those HCl will will uh, etch this precipitate and it will be completely clean that can be controlled by uh, increasing the HCl concentration in the gas composition. So, now the problems in silicon epidaxial growth are one is faceting just now I discussed a non planarity of the surface due to lower growth rates along various crystal planes. Second problem is nucleations that also I have shown the silicon nuclei will deposit precipitate on the oxide. It is reduced by adding more chlorine to the growth chemistry. Adjusting silicon chlorine ratio process goes from non selective to selective. Higher HCl improved selectivity by etching small silicon modules on silicon dioxide. Formation of defects along silicon SiO2 interface that is another problem and dependence of the growth rate on size and distribution of windows. Size and distribution of windows also have also has some role on the uh, thickness of the epidaxial film. Okay. Now, uh, three configurations of epidaxy is shown here. One is here the oxide you can form in window and then you etch the silicon from the group then you grow epitaxial film. But here problem is the facet. We have seen the facet and facets are here. The facets you can remove by the second method. What is that? Silicon is there, oxide is mask, mask is made then on silicon you grow silicon dioxide. So, the problem here is less because you see whatever the, the silicon film is growing continuously the interface is oxide all along, but here it is silicon at the middle particle, but in this particular case up to this portion here is silicon and bottom is silicon lateral side silicon, but after that it faces some oxide layer that is why from there facets are formed. Because lateral side both oxide and silicon are there, but in this particular case lateral side complete whole layer is oxide because of that the facets are absent here. In the third case to get uh, the side wall not the different type types of thing complete oxide. So, this side wall insulator is made then you grow the film then facets are also removed. The facets are coming here because of silicon and oxide two type of materials at the lateral wall the growth process is getting. Okay, this is uh, the reason. And another is a low pressure epitaxy 
and pressure of the reaction chamber is 50 to 150 torr there. Flow pattern modifies stagnant layer thickness, improves epitaxial silicon deposition uniformities across and along the susceptor, permits low epitaxial growth temperature in low pressure epitaxy, significant reduction of auto doping, heating method must be critical in low pressure epitaxy and outgassing of susceptors prevented by heavy silicon carbide coating. Now, so far we have discussed on uh, formation of epitaxial film, single crystal growth of semiconductor materials which is uh, monocrystalline. Now, uh, we will discuss little bit on the growth of dissimilar material that means two semiconductor films are grown which, the, which is not the same material. For example, if I want to make uh, uh, the silicon crystal on aluminum oxide Al2O3, Al2O3 is, uh, is a different crystal structure and silicon has got another crystal structure. So, these two materials if I, if I use in epitaxial growth normally if we grow silicon film on aluminum oxide, it may not be single crystal, but there are certain techniques by which we can form this uh, single crystal layer over uh, another material which is not uh, silicon. So, there are three types, these are known heteroepitaxial growth, the growth of dissimilar material. There are three classes of heteroepitaxial growth, these are known as commensurate, incommensurate and pseudomorphic. Commensurate class of heteroepitaxial growth involves substrate which has the same crystal structure and lattice constant as the AP layer. In case of incommensurate, no lattice and crystal match with the substrate that is silicon on sapphire. Misfit between the crystal at or near the interface propagates the epi into epitaxial layer. That means incommensurate epitaxial film may not be of very good quality. There are a lot of misfit uh, defects, misfit dislocations may appear. And the third category is pseudomorphic. Pseudomorphic is in this particular case, epilayer are not lattice matched. Instead of forming defects at the interface, epilayer strains to match the substrate. And pseudomorphic uh, heteropyrexial growth is very popular nowadays in a high speed uh, bipolar technology where we can form silicon crystal on germanium which is SIG material that is single crystal silicon and there is a pseudomorphic and strain layer growths are also possible. Now in commensurate and strain layer epitaxy, how the crystal structure looks like it is shown in this diagram. In the first picture is the commensurate that means here substrate and epitaxial layer are there and uh, the second one is a strain relaxed incommensurate that means totally different material which does not have same crystal structure that means lattice spacing between the uh, substrate and the AP layer crystal are not same different. But in the third one is a pseudomorphic there actually the lattice uh, constant is adjusted in the form of a strain formation. Most of the earliest heteropitaxial was incommensurate. A popular example is silicon on sapphire. Nowadays, a lot of research is going on how to get good quality heteropitaxial films which may be used for high speed VLSI. Now, these are all uh, categories of epitaxial growth we discussed. And now, in conclude, uh, 